Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I invite the brethren to stand up. And we're going to open our Bibles. First Samuel. Chapter 17. From verse 55. First Samuel, chapter 17, we are going to read from verse 15 onwards. Amen. When Saul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As your soul lives, I know I king, I don't know. So the king said, Inquire whose son this young man is. Then as David returned from the slaughtering of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before the before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his head in his hand, and said, and Saul said to him, "Whose son are you, young man?" So David answered, "I am the son of your servant Jesse of Beth Bethlehem." My brother, is a story that is very well known of us. It's a story that is very well known of us inside of the uh, Christian circles uh, about the story of David. David here was a youth. He was a shepherd. And there was a war between Israel and the, the Israelites and the uh, Jewish people against the Philistines. It was a war. It was a terrible war. The armies, they were positioned. The soldiers were positioned, waiting for the order to start uh, the battle. And there was a giant called Goliath. And this giant, he took on his own to fight against the greatest warrior of Israel. And the winner will bring victory to his people. And it would avoid the bloodshedding and so many deaths. And this warrior, Goliath, this giant, he stayed on the territory where he was, on the camp where he was, shouting and confronting the Jewish people, the kingdom, the God of Israel. And this brought a fear, a great fear, because Goliath was very feared. Everybody knew Goliath because of his dexterity, his courage. Everybody knew Goliath. And nobody from the part of Israel uh, decided to fight against Goliath, not even King Saul, who was the king. He should be the first to make himself available to go and fight. And, it, and this didn't happen. And days passed by, and now David, the word says that David had several broad brethren, brothers that were soldiers. They were fighting on the field, waiting for the, for the combat, and, and nothing happened. So then the father of David, uh, I need to go back a little bit on, on the story to go back to the point where we need to get. Because not everyone knows the story according to the word. They hear and see movies, but it is very important that we pay attention to the details of what is in the word. Because sometimes they, they don't, sh they don't, 
give a precise account of the details. And the details is what the Lord left for us, so that allows us to understand the revelation of the Lord. And many, time, many times, a word, an action, changes completely the spiritual context of what God wants to say to us tonight. So now the father of David prepares David, prepare food, prepare cheese, and give to David, and ask David to deliver food to his brothers, the children of Jesse. So then David leaves his sheep and goes towards the place where the combat was supposed to happen. And then David, when he arrives and hears the confrontation of Goliath, and the accusations and, and the provocations of Goliath, and David gets upset with that because David knew that who was being confronted was not man. That fight was to ashamed the God of Israel. They wanted not they didn't want to touch men, but they wanted to touch on the Lord. And David taken by the Spirit of the Lord, he said, No, I'm going. I will make myself available. I cannot accept this. So then David presented himself to King Saul and King Saul was a little uh, doubtful. Nobody knew David. Not even the general Abner knew who David was. And David came into a situation where he was not well known. David was not a warrior. He didn't have experience with the sword and shield and helmet. He didn't have ex any experience with none of it. The armor that, uh, armor that David had for his own combat was his staff and his sling. David faced the bears and the lions with this. The strength of David was not a human strength based on those weapons, conventional weapons of the time. David had a staff. He was a shepherd. David took care of the flock of his father. And now King Saul lands to David his own armor. And David puts it on and his clothing for sure was a little larger than he was. And David puts this on and verse 38 it says, and David Saul put his ropes on David, put on his head a bronze helmet and put him on armor. And David began to walk with wearing those garments and he never had used it. And then David said, I cannot walk with this because I never used it before. And David took it out from his body. David was not comfortable with that. And the word tells us that he left it all behind, took the clothing and the armor of the king, and took five stones. Everybody knows the revelation that is on these five stones, what, is, what it means to us. We spoke in previous occasions. He took his staff, chose five stones, and put on his bag and departed. And he went to face the great warrior Goliath with this weapon, with those weapons. He, he went towards the direction of Goliath. And it is interesting that verse 48 says the following. See, 48 says, it's good that the bread may follow. So it was when the Philistine rose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. See? So a young man, he was an instrument player with a staff on his hand, with a couple of stones on his bag, and he goes to face the greatest Philistine warrior. And he, was, he didn't go there afraid. He went there running. He 
hasten going to meet Goliath. And he is victorious in, in the battle. He's victorious. With his weapons, he defeats Goliath. He chose a stone on the head of Goliath. He was, uh, was a, had a good aim. And then he takes the uh, Goliath uh, sword and there he puts an end on everything. And it is interesting here that King saw when he, I cannot even imagine the expression and the face of Saul. I, I, I'm here trying to imagine how Saul saw all of this. You know what called his attention the most? Who is the father of that kid? Abner. Who is the father of that kid? Because soon he thought, if this young man who is, is uh, this young does this, can imagine the father? Because everything happened was passed down from father to, to children. The parents uh, were the ones who taught the children how to be warriors. It was inheritance. And then he asked, what is the name of the father of that kid? And Abdan said, I don't know. Hail the king. Don't kill me, but I don't know. I don't know. So call him. And David presented himself to the king, to King Saul. And Saul asked him, what is the name of your father? And David answers, humbly answers, I am the son of your servant, Jesse. From Bethlehem. And my brethren, this story is for us much more than a story. Because here it shows to us the disposition of the servant of God. It shows to us how the servant of Jesus should act. How the servant of, of the Lord should act in this last hour. The moment in which we are living, the time called soon, the moment in which we are living in a world where everything is allowed, the last church, the church of Laodicea, uh, uh, human rights, we live in a moment in which the servant of God needs to be identified in this way. Because we live moments in our spiritual life as a church, as a church, the body of Christ, we live in a battle, a constant battle. Our spiritual life is a, is a constant battle. We can never rest. We can never stop being vigilant. We never stop praying. We can never stop seeking the Lord. Because whenever we do this, the enemy of our souls who is in the, in the air, he comes to shame us. He, come, he comes to put us down. Do you know why he comes? He comes to steal our fellowship with God. He wants to steal what God gave us, which is our eternity. So our fight is not against flesh, against the husband, against the wife, against the son, against the neighbor. No. Our fight is against the spirits that are in the air. Our spiritual, our spiritual uh, battle is spiritual. We cannot face those accusations. We cannot face the world which is out there with a sword in our hand, with a rifle, with a revolver. No, we cannot. The Church of the Lord is victorious with the weapons of God, with the armor of God. We cannot place ourselves in the same position, the same situation as the world placed themselves. The Son of the Lord has to have an understanding, a definition. I'm God above all. I'm the Lord Jesus above all, above green card, above lottery, above, above riches, above everything. I will seek the Lord in first place. All the other things, God will add by faith in God's time according to the way God wants. Not how I want. I'm going to give a, a quick solution for those problems. No. When Jesus put this armor on, he said, I'm not used to this, Saul. I'm not going to put this this armor. No. This thing is it's uncomfortable. Take this stuff out. I have my own weapons. 
And the Church of the Lord has their own weapons. The Church of the Lord has the resources that the Lord gave to us. Sometimes it is mosquitoes. Yeah, boy, they really bother. Sometimes you need to catch them. We cannot allow ourselves to let go by what the, the world keep, makes available to us. No. The Church of the Lord will only be victorious. This is the theme of the year. Who remembers? How are we going to be victorious? Through the blood and through the Word. Those are the spiritual weapons. Those are resources that the Lord has left for us. We cannot have in us the sword of this world, the words of this world, the, the way we the world speaks. We cannot have this. We're new creatures. We have God in our hearts. We have Jesus as our direction, as our central focus is Jesus. So David takes this away and he faces Goliath with the weapons that he was used to, which is the staff, which is the direction of the Holy Spirit, was the stones were taken from the river, was the means of grace, the resources that the Lord left for us, the sling, and then he departed, running. You know why? Because the servant of the Lord, when he is in the Spirit, he's not afraid of anything. He walks towards eternity. And he goes in haste, because we are living the moment of, of the haste. We live in a time called soon. We live in a moment in the Lord is waiting for us. We live in a moment in which you can be taken away and meet the Lord at any moment. And the Word tells us that we have our spiritual armor. Let's open our Bible in Ephesians. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6.13 Ephesians 6.13 Ephesians 6.13 Ephesians 6.13 Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and then 15, and having sh should your feet with the prepared of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fury darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utter utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of God, of the gospel. This is the armor that we need to wear, my brethren. We need to fight with the spiritual weapons. In the same way that Goliath wanted to shame the God of Israel, the enemy also wants to shame us. The enemy wants to put us, put us down in dust. Because when we're ashamed, we leave God aside. When you are sad, when you are, when you are involved with those things, you have, it's very difficult for you to pray, to read the Word. It's very difficult for you to do early dawn come to early dawn, do an early dawn at home, it's difficult for you to come to the service because the enemy does that to remove your, your fellowship with God. The enemy does this to, to take away your reason for living because the enemy wants to cancel us. He wants to remove the power of God over our lives, the blessings of God over our lives. That's why we cannot have this armor. But we need to take possession of the armor of God because it is with them, the, ar the weapons of God. The arm of God is this which is going to make us overcome all things. In the name of the Lord, because our war, our fight is not against the flesh. 
but it is against everything that is in the air. So we cannot even imagine, we don't even see. So then the king asks, who is this, the father of that kid? You know why? Because in truth, we have a father. We have a God who is above all things. We have a Lord who is the Lord of Lords, who is the doctor of doctors, who is the one who is at our disposal, looking at us with the gaze of mercy and judgment and justice. That's why Saul wanted to know who was the father of that kid. But you know why? Because the world out there needs to know who our father is. Because everything that we do, everything that we may do, the honor and the glory may be given to our God. The honor and glory is not for David. It's not for me. It's not for you. The honor and glory is for the Lord, who is the God who uh, gives victory in our battles. The Lord who is at uh, our disposal with hands laying upon us to give us victory. So everything that we might do, we need to first think on God. So everything that you might do in your life, consult the Lord. Seek direction from the Lord. You know why? Because that's what's going to matter. So when you you are in the presence of God, you're not going to be able to be justified because you're good, because you're rich, because you're American because you're Brazilian or any other nationality. No. What is going to justify you in the presence of God is when you present to Him the sacrifice of Jesus in the cross of Calvary. Because this is, that's the only way for man to be able to reach salvation. It is through Jesus. There's no other way. There's no other path. There's no other opportunity. There's nothing. So then, who is the father of that kid? And his and David answered, I'm son of Jesse. You're a servant. And we also have a father. Who is your father? Who is your father? What have you been doing? Is it pleasing God? Your actions? Your positioning? What are the weapons that you are using in your battles? Are you waiting in the Lord? Or you are uh, acting in haste? Or you are afraid of acting? Remember one thing. If you, if you decide to use the spiritual weapons, if you wait for the Lord to give you direction, you are not going to be ashamed because the Lord is going to honor you. And you go with haste towards the Lord. And you go with haste towards your victory. But if you are using the weapons of this world, sometimes out there, man is victorious. They use their own tricks, their own artifice, but for a time. But the Christian, no. The Christian is ashamed. Because the Christian, when the Christian leaves the spiritual enter into the flesh, he is ashamed because he's not used to this. When the Lord brought us, when the Lord took us away from the place where we were, we became new creatures. The world doesn't matter to us anymore. The old man was left behind. That's why we accepted this commitment with the Lord, to have the control of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So that when man goes through this path of wearing the armor of Saul and clothing of Saul and leaves the armor of God, he is ashamed. But when he does the opposite, he leaves everything that is of this life and he, he embraces his call. He takes the right position. He receives what God has for him and he enters into it. God blesses him. God honors him. He may even lose here in this world, but his name will be written in the Book of Life. That's what matters. And by faith, the Lord has for his servants and his church, he has victories. Amen. May the Lord tonight bless us. You know why? 
because the Lord has revealed tonight that He was searching the hearts who are here. The Lord has shown an angel that was, you can even say, the angel was at the door. And the angel observed our lives, how we are acting. And the Lord was searching our hearts. And it's interesting that the Lord gave us direction. He gave us a word. We needed to take possession of our spiritual life and begin to live spiritually. Because only in this way the Lord was going to be able to honor us. Amen. Let us sing a song. And you, at this moment, place your life in the altar of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord is here. He's searching the hearts. He wants to visit your life. And you will, at this moment, place your life in God's altar. You don't know how your daily life is. We don't know what you have been doing, but the Lord knows. And now maybe it's the moment for you to ask forgiveness and make a new covenant with the Lord and say, Lord, I want from this day forward have this armor that's going to make me be a victorious servant, servant in this moment in which we are living and take possession of this. And you will see how the Lord will guide your life and the Lord will open up the doors and how the Lord will honor and answer with power your prayers.
Most of God. I invite the brethren to stand up. The Lord has shown a vision that there were a few with helmets. In the vision, when the angel was searching the hearts, he was inspecting the people that were coming, in, like in the army, like in, a, in an army. He noticed that a couple were with a helmet that was not properly placed. Others, the sword was not sharp and, and the sandals were untied. But he came and he adjusted everything. How God is merciful. The Lord doesn't look at our failures, but God always gives us another opportunity. And tonight, the Lord is giving you, who enter here, another opportunity to adjust your life, to position yourself in a different way, or take another direction, not the direction that the Lord has offered us, but the direction that the Lord has for your life. And this direction is direct yourself to the north. Our direction is go to the north, not being here, around, walking around. No, the Lord has the best for your people. The Lord has the best for His church. But we need to position yourself in a serious way. The commitment of God is with the faithful. The commitment of God is with the one who hears, to the one who heeds to the voice of the Lord. But the Lord tonight is instructing us, is advising us. Take the helmet of salvation and place it in the, the proper way because this is the helmet which is going to protect your mind from the arrows, flaming arrows of the enemy, the worldly thoughts, and because the attack comes to the mind. But the helmet of salvation is for this because when we have the mind of Christ, we have salvation that gives, Jesus gives us and the sword which is dual. The Lord is now giving us a new sword, a sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Is That's the one that you're going to use to be victorious because the Word of God does not allow us to be uh, commit, uh, to be f failures. The Word of the Lord shows us the path and opens the path. And also speaks of sandals of the gospel of peace and putting the sandals of preparation of peace, of the gospel of peace. Many live a gospel according to their own way of thinking. Many are living like that. Gospel should not be adapted to your own system. We are the ones who have to adapt to, gospel, to the gospel of Christ. Because the gospel that God has for us is the eternal gospel. It's not this gospel out there. This gospel of the self-benefit and then that I'm a Christian, only one I want to be. No, the gospel that God has for us is the eternal gospel. We need to enter into it. You need to live this eternal gospel. And many have not lived this. Many are living the gospel which has been adapted to them. And that's general, as dangerous. The angel came here and saw that those are, are living the gospel in this way. He said, look, I'm going to adjust you. Put your house in order. Remember when the prophet Isaiah spoke to the king? He said, put your house in order, king, because you're going to die. <coughs> and the Lord is giving this word to, to us. Put your, your life in order. In the earth of the Lord, live this gospel. And you see how the Lord will bless you, not only you, but your entire family. Amen. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Well, we praise for this night once again. We praise you because we have not seen our failures, but you loved us the way we are. We glorify your name, Lord, because we know that we're going to live in this place in a different way than the way we enter, Lord, because we know that your word is alive, Lord. We give you grace for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. My brother, this word is not an exhortation. We're not here sending um, a message to anybody and exhort anybody, but the gift that the Lord has given us, uh, it's a gift, a spiritual gift that the Lord has given us, is bring us to, to be concerned 
we need to deliver this message to the brethren because I cannot carry this responsibility with me. Not even the pastor knows. So now we put the responsibility on your shoulders. Now it's you and, and God. We need, in the same way I heard, each one of us heard the word. We need to leave this so that the Lord in this way may bless us. Amen. Lord, receive the service and give us a night in your presence. Visit, Lord, each heart tonight with dreams, with visions. Lord, so that through the spiritual gifts you may confirm this service and your word, your teaching, and the will of God, so that your spirit may uh, touch the hearts of those who entered here tonight, so that we may be better servants, and that we may be life-dependent on you, and that we may be servants of the living God, and that you may be pleased with us, and that you may find grace, and that you may have mercy on each one of us. Take us home in peace, giving us a day tomorrow in your presence, and that the service tomorrow morning, the rehearsals are going to be made, the evening service and the invitation that are going to be cast that you may bless each moment and of our lives. Bless also your servants that are coming back from Port St. Lucie. The service that happened there, lay your hands upon them and prepare us for the seminar that we are going to have, Lord, so that we may have a present from your part, Lord, and that this seminar may be a landmark for that region. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say, Lord, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to God. The church may be seated. If someone needs a prayer, we are here at your disposal. And I'd like to remind you that the sermon that we are going to have next Sunday, a week from now, the brand that have not just subscribed, you have until tomorrow night to subscribe. You can find your leader responsible for your group, still give your name. And now we're going to have a meeting with Group B. And I'll say the peace of the Lord to everyone. And this month, the homes are being visited. Is your, has your home been visited? Raise your hand. It's a week. What? Your home. Has your home been visited? Amen. Only five homes. Hey, wait a minute. Where are the homes? What? We're, we're a week from the end of the month and nobody was visited yet? Oh, man. Pastor Sabado. You know, fix this situation. <laughs> Look. It's a week to, to the end of the month. Amen. Difficult situation. Let's go. One week. The church, the whole church needs to be visited. Three weeks. It didn't work. Now this week, everybody has to be visited. If, if, if you have not been visited, call the pastor. Then we are going to visit it. Amen. Peace of the Lord.
recuperado por né? Então tem que ver se não alguma coisa não aconteceu.